After discussing Ty Piron and the Alabama defense headlined by Terrell Lewis as two of the things that stood out to me from the matchup between Alabama and Tennessee, the third thing I enjoyed from the contest, running back Najee Harris. Don't look now, but the junior has three 100-yard rushing performances. He's got three of them. Two of them against the Southeastern Conference, Texas A&M, and Tennessee. And uh, he is getting stronger as these games go on. Getting stronger, getting better, power running in between the tackles. He still has his moments where he likes to bounce plays outside and go east to west, but doing a little bit more north and south running now. And the offensive line, really, really outstanding job. Putting a hat on a hat, driving guys off the football, and creating opportunities for Najee Harris and Brian Robinson. But with Najee Harris being the 100-yard guy, we're going to highlight him. And uh, what's crazy is, for the first time in about two years, first time in two years, Alabama had to go into the time capsule and pull out old Bama, old school Bama to win. And this is good because it all kind of goes back to What Steve Sarkeesian mentioned in the open practice back in August, it's we want to be an offense that does so many things well to where we become unguardable. We become undefendable, if you will. We are more prolific than what we were, you know, being Alabama a year ago. And sometimes it takes a situation where you can go back in the time capsule pull out that old smash mouth running game and show we have multiple dimensions. Alabama has multiple dimensions to beating the football team. And I mean, it it was cool, you know, watching this offensive line with Leatherwood, Neal, Landon Dickerson, Deontay Brown, Jedrick Wills to see these guys line up, put a man on a man, drive Tennessee off the football, wear them down, And for Najee Harris, 21 carries, 105 yards rushing, two scores, averaged five yards per carry. This was a good sign. This is a good sign moving forward. And this is something that you're going to see a lot more against Arkansas in this upcoming week right here. Tua Tagovailoa, the tightrope surgery on his ankle, will miss at least one week, according to Nick Saban, this week against the Hogs. So, You will have Mac Jones working with the old A.J. McCarron playbook. Some play action. Lean on your offensive line. Lean on your running backs. Play ball control. Grind it out. Get the win that way. So third thing that stood out to me, the Alabama run game, offensive line, better and better and better, which takes us to final thing that I enjoy from the matchup. Slade Bolden, okay? As much as I like Mac Jones, and I do, and I have confidence in Mac Jones, and I believe he can get the job done, and if you put the right scheme around him and you cater to his strengths, you can win some games with Mac Jones. But Alabama, Nick Saban, and his coaching staff, it's got to find a way to get Slade Bolden more involved on the field offensively because that young man can flat out play ball. The lone passing touchdown by either team came from a wide receiver, a former high school quarterback from West Monroe High School in Louisiana. And the crazy thing is, Slade Bolden was not highly recruited. He's in Louisiana and... uh, You go down to that state, you shake a tree limb, and five stars will fall at your own expense. But the Gatorade Player of the Year from that state in 2017 just so happened to be, or in 2018, excuse me, just so happened to be a three-star in Bolden. And this dude can play quarterback, he can play running back, he can play receiver, he can play as a defensive back. He did it all in high school, and he came under the tag of an athlete. And sometimes what's so hard engaging these guys is 
as a coaching staff, you're trying to figure out which specific spot can we get the most effort out of this guy, right? Alabama had the same issue with Blake Sims, had the same issue with Trayvon Diggs, is having this issue right now with Chadarius Towson, the four-star out of Tanner, Alabama, who came in the 2017 class, just a flat-up athlete. And uh, you really are trying to find the one area on the field to where if we put this player here, we can get the maximum potential from that player. But Slade Bolton is just one of those guys you just got to play him and let this guy go on the field and just perform because, once again, long touchdown pass of the game came from him, a six-yard strike to Miller Forrestal in the end zone. And uh, mark it down, put it in your memory banks, load it in your archives, save it in your brain. Slade Bolden is Julian Edelman 2.0. Slade Bolden is the next Julian Edelman. I said it, period, end of discussion. I know a lot of people are saying he draws comparisons to Hunter Renfro. I'm not going to do Slade like that. He is the next Julian Edelman. If you look at Julian Edelman in high school, in, uh, in Woodside High School in California, Edelman played wide receiver, played quarterback, did both, excelled at both. If he goes to College of San Mateo, play quarterback there. Then he goes, he transfers to Kent State, Nick Saban's alma mater, played quarterback there, played a little running back there as well. He ran the ball, threw the ball. Julian Edelman did everything. Just a complete athlete type of a player. And then he gets drafted by the New England Patriots and is right now one of the best slot receivers in the game. And not only that, He has built enough trust in Bill Belichick to where, you know, Bill will allow him to throw a pass every now and again. He's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So, Slade Bolden, the next Julian Edelman. You heard it right here. Want to see him get more opportunities on the field. But that was the fourth thing that stood out to me. So, running back over these again. Four things I enjoy from the matchup between Alabama and Tennessee. Number one, Ty P. Ryan. Nick Saban put his best on the field at punter. Glimpses of J.K. Scott before our very eyes, ladies and gentlemen, Ty P. Ryan. Number two, the Alabama defense starting to show more, starting to flash more, starting to see some big things. And the ringleader of it all, Terrell Lewis, T. Lou. The injury is behind him now, playing like a first round pick number three Alabama running game Najee Harris getting stronger as the season goes on his third 100 yard performance looking a whole lot better number four Slade Cat Slade Bolden the next Julian Edelman you gotta put some way you gotta find some way to get this guy more on the field he is a big time athlete well folks That's going to do it for this edition of In My Own Words, the podcast. Stephen Smith touched on Alabama Magazine. As always, folks, you download the TDA Magazine app. You can get this on your iPhone if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone. Podcast options conveniently listed at the bottom of the screen. As always, subscribe to TDAlabamaMag.com. For all the latest and touchdown Alabama magazine on YouTube. Get with us, folks. The site, over 1 million video views, over 5,000 subscribers strong, thanks to you, the fans. When we return from the break, I'm going to dive into what makes Christian Barmore so special and why will it be pivotal for the Crimson Tide to get him as many reps as possible in the Dime Rabbits package as the Tide pushes closer toward its matchup with LSU. Don't touch that down, folks. Coming back, start next week's edition of In My Own Words. What's up, 
college football fans, you can catch the hottest show in the streets. That being In My Own Words, the podcast, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Subscribe to Touchdown Alabama magazine for the best in Todd football.